uh, and so now I have the video, uh, the audio that I captured on my phone here. And you know, the simplest way for me to get this <laughs> onto someplace else is just to email it to myself. So that's that's what I'm going to do. I'm not even going to plug this in. Uh, I probably don't have the cable, and uh, and uh, so it's just much simpler if I just email it. So I'm going to do that now. And okay, so I've emailed myself to myself my audio. Uh, it's a small file, six uh, six megabytes. Six and a half. It's an M4A, so it's already been compressed, uh, you know, for streaming or what have you. And uh, of course, on my phone, there is an option in the sound recorder to record to high quality wave, which is what I should have done. But I'm not going to redo it. I just forgot to do that. But continuing forward, I will work with uh, the more high quality uh, recording option. Uh, but this should be fine, you know, uh, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm uh, looking, you know, maybe make, make some footsteps down, footstep sounds and uh, uh, perhaps some explosions. Uh, having previewed uh, the, the file, I can already see that these are some of the things that I can possibly do. So now I'm just going to go and open up Reaper, uh, my audio editing software. Here it is. Do, 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 do. Oops. <laughs> and here we go. Right. Okay. I'm not going to do the new version. And once again, I've been using this for quite some time. Uh, and so I have to wait for the countdown. One. Still evaluating. I swear to God, I will buy it eventually. Eventually. Uh, I should have some money in my PayPal account this month. Okay. So here we are. Here we are in Reaper. Here's my audio file. And with any luck, I will have the appropriate uh, plug-in or what have you that will actually uh, load it up. <laughs> oh, it's a stereo file. That's interesting. I didn't think that my recorder actually had two microphones, but evidently it did. Uh, or it does. Uh, okay, with uh, spatialized audio, a stereo file is actually problematic because it actually will be messing with uh, we'll be messing with the, the spatialization algorithms within FMOD. So your sound effects, I'm not talking about the music, but your sound effects should really be single track, monos. They should be monos. And so someplace here I've got the uh, option to, to uh, bust it up into uh, two, two monos. Maybe it's here. Uh, take... Delete, loop, take envelope, show. I always got to find this stuff. Um, render, copy, copy, cut, trim, remove. Oh, it's here someplace. Um, item processing, maybe. Yeah, dynamic split items. Explode multi-channel audio or MIDI into its new one-channel items. Okay, that, that's, that's where it is. So item processing, that makes sense. And this is the item. This is the track. This is the item. So explode. Let's see. How does, let's see how that goes. There we go. I got two multi channels. I got now. I got my left and my right channel one and channel two. Uh, and you see how it made this little folder, which is kind of nice. But I'm actually in this case, I'm going to actually remove that. I want my two channels here. So here's my original. I'm going to actually remove this track. All right and. I'm going to now mute one. All right, so this is not going to be playing. I'm just going to be hearing this. Uh, I've got my pan, my volume here. Uh, that's my master volume. And my pan is here. Uh, so I've center panned, mono, mono. Uh, you also see this duplicated down here in what's called the docker. Uh, uh, if you have uh, two screens, I usually drag this out and put it on the second screen. But uh, so you have lot, lots more real estate. But if you're working with just a single channel or a couple of ch tracks, it's okay to just keep it in one window. And it's easier for my video recording purposes. Uh, so that's muted. Uh, and now I'm going to play it. Recording. So I'm already recording, and you can see this wave file coming in. That's my voice. So that's... Now, again, I want to... Part of the video. <laughs> muffle the sound. Uh, I want it to be gentle. So that's, that's working.
so now let's actually find okay, I'm scrolling in and out let's find oop this is a peak that's bad uh, let's see what we got here okay and now I'm gonna take okay. my bag of rice okay finally I'm doing my bag something. of rice Uh, jump out over here. Right. That sounds like an explosion. So I've just captured the sound. And now let's play with this sound. Footsteps, perhaps? What do we got here? Could be useful. And what do we got here? And I'm going to put this right on top. Right, here's where I remove the t-shirt. No cushion. There's nothing in between. And look how much bigger the file is, or how fatter the, the wave file is. Notice here, we have these, these red red marks. Uh, that means that I'm peeking. Notice how just, uh oh, puppy dog. <laughs> uh, I'm peeking. Uh, I'm going, I'm exceeding the, the, uh, the information space inside of my my wave file so uh it's it's spiking uh and that's you don't want that right this is good here right it doesn't get all the way to the top of uh of the render uh window thingy here uh here it's actually peaking that's not to say that that i can't use that distortion to my advantage uh but it, what, what what we're talking about here is is uh what, what's happening is uh, well, let me just grab a piece of paper and make a quick diagram. Uh, zing, zing. Okay, so here is our space. Okay, we got to hit the whiteboard now. Uh, we're showing you in the uh, uh, wave files where uh, the um, density of sound was coming up and going down beyond the data range, what is actually reproducible or capturable by our range of, of, of audio, uh, our, our range of data. So to the whiteboard. So imagine this is our track, right? This is our track. And we have this thing here, which is zero, zero, zero. And up here we got plus one, plus one, and down here we have minus one, minus one. Uh, essentially, you know, these measures are essentially arbitrary. Uh, what, what, what we're talking about is maximum and maximum in the opposite direction. So I've talked about a sine wave before. All right, it goes like this. This is a pure tone, a pure tone. Uh, its frequency is defined by where it starts to rise and it dips and it comes back up and it hits zero zero crossing so this idea of zero crossing is actually very important particularly when it comes to editing our software uh, our, our wave files all right so here's my wavelength up and down up and down or is it here yeah okay <laughs> sorry uh but there that's my that's my wavelength that's my that's my wavelength. Wavelength, a completion, a completion of the wave, an up, a down, and an up again. If you're editing a piece of video, 
uh, a piece of audio you want to make your cuts when it crosses zero when your file crosses zero now in a complex file in a complex wave file we'll have well let me just get rid of this da -da -da -dang -da -da -dang. draw my zero back in we're gonna have something like this right that's our wave file uh, if you zoom in if you zoom in onto the the data there is always these places where it crosses zero crossing zero zero cross ideally this is where you want to make your cuts because if you're making a cut someplace here let's say I'm gonna make an edit here what happens is that the wave file doesn't and I'm gonna make an edit here okay let's just say I'm interested in this section this is my sample here sample uh, if I'm cutting it here and then I cut it here the wave is not completing right it's not finishing it, it, it's not going back to zero uh, so I'm gonna get a click 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 uh, this is because you cannot cut a wave file in the middle you can a, a wave according to Maxwell maybe I'll make a link to that no matter what container you have a, a, a sound or a wave or a heat source he, he made he did this experiment in an oven the wave is can depend no matter what the volume inside is the wave is is not going to get cut the, uh, at that volume so if we have a wave length again back to back to a sine wave let me hit the sine wave again so, so here's my sine wave uh, and continue on and continue on uh, if you stick this uh, this this sound inside of an oven that has a certain dimension let's say it's 10 centimeters <laughs> let's just say but this wave is actually 15 centimeters long yeah sound is a physical thing so let's just say it's 15 centimeters long and we're cramming it into a 10 centimeter box so if this is uh, oops if this is uh 15 centimeters here and we're cramming it into a 10 centimeter box so minus 2.5 centimeters clunk and clunk this is actually physically impossible right in terms of physics in the real world now in in the digital world it's totally possible because you can just cut your data here and you cut your data here and you will have this you will have this way from here to here oh you most certainly will and it'll be uh, 2.357 kilobytes uh, but what's gonna happen is that the sound is just gonna go click click on either end uh, as Maxwell proved in his oven and I'm not talking about Maxwell's silver hammer <laughs> Maxwell's insulated oven <laughs> he he proved without a doubt if you have without a doubt if you have a 10 centimeter oven and a 20 centimeter wavelength that wave is just gonna it's just gonna go out it's gonna it's gonna ex escape the container it's not gonna stay when within that container it can't uh, it, it this is impossible uh, it's not allowed to do that according to Newton and Einstein has some other ideas about that but but you know and then we get into string theory which is also cool but uh, but but the fact of the matter is is that you cannot cut a wave uh, it's it's impossible it must it must cross zero it will always cross zero 
and then if you are actually cutting it because it's just data at 10 centimeters when it's a 20 centimeter wave you got clickety clickety click okay so that is just a, an editing principle uh, so let me erase this again and what I showed you in the DAW is the digital audio workstation well I showed you this here's my zero crossing and here's my wave file going something like that and what I did is I did a fade in and a fade out and as I explained that these this fade in and this fade out effectively bring the amplitude of the wave down to a zero crossing so you don't get clicks so there's no clicks here no clicks uh, so point number one point number two point number two is peaks so here's my zero crossing and I've got a wave file oops my pen come on give, God, give me some juice here's my pen here's my wave file all good all good but then all of a sudden I do something and it goes bam 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 and then maybe it peters out uh, the point is that here at the top and bottom of my uh, range of data what's going to happen to this uh, I'm not re I cannot represent the top of that curve or the bottom of that curve I, I have lost that information that information is lost so what happens is if we sort of zoom in on the wave file what you end up with is something like this you know it goes like this and it flattens and then it comes back down and it flattens and it comes back up and it flattens and this is just no information no info and down here no information no info so it's flat all right it's a flat it just that it, the, the wave is not completed it just goes up the sound goes up and it just goes clack and it comes back down and it goes clack and it comes back up and it goes clack and this is uh, uh, what's called digital distortion uh, and so when you're doing your recordings you need to pay attention to keeping it within the actual data range that we have and this is what's called gain g a i n it's gain gain on the microphone and so you have to adjust in one way or another depending upon what your system is is one way or another you need to get that gain to the point where you know for me i like it three quarters all right three quarter Three quarter, which actually equates to about minus six decibel. But this is, you know, that's just a measuring scheme. Uh, it, it, it's arbitrary. They, it's just a scale, right? We've talked about scale. It's just a scale. Uh, but I, uh, I like to keep it at three quarter. And why do I like three quarter? Is because I'm getting the hottest signal that is usable with the least amount theoretically the least amount of noise from the from the system that I have so it, let's just say I wasn't recording at three quarter somehow my my waves are here right well, that's a very quiet sound very quiet and so if I need to boost this if I need to amplify this and and make it louder all the you know here's my mic and here's my preamp and here's the thing that I'm doing this and then there's the processing and da, 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 da. all of these things all these steps in the chain are going to accumulate and create noise noise uh, so if I have the, the cleanest track that I could possibly have at three-quarter 
gain, three quarter gain, minus six decibels. Uh, I've got a useful, I've got a useful track. You know, this is useful. Uh, I can process it. There's no spikes. I can run it through reverbs, both analog and digital. I don't have to worry. So keep it down. And uh, with many of my clients, I, uh, they, you know, they send me some, some sample files and they want it to, you know, they, they send me their individual tracks and they want it to sound good on Bandcamp or, or SoundCloud or whatever. And it's all just completely back, 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 back. Because, okay, it makes it loud. And so people think that loud music is better than quiet music. But uh, what we want when we're recording is what's called transience. Transience. Uh, transient. Transient. Tran oh, there's an N. Transience. So that's a, that's a term. And, and it really just simply relates to, do you got these nice bits here? Do you have a nice dynamic range in your recording? And it never goes to here. Bonk. It never goes too high. And it never goes too low. These are your transients. So if you don't see these all these little spikies and what you have on your file... And when, when you look at it in your DAW, is a bunch of this stuff, right? which is essentially a square wave. You know, everything is flat on the top or flat on the bottom and some stuff here. You don't have your transients and therefore you're really not capturing, fully capturing uh, the, the, the spectrum of the sound. And this is regardless of what stupid ass microphone you stick in front of the source. Right? You want your transients. You want to get a file that's looking like this. Right? Then you have your transients. Simple as that. And uh, so it was, you can use those flatnesses. And there are, of course, ways to round out that, that wave file, various algorithms. Uh, but in it, ideally, you want to keep your gain, your level, someplace like here, right, where it is not hitting the top. It stays within bounds of, of, of my data capture space. All right. So let me just find and quickly edit a sound. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go to the beginning here. Where did I, where, where, where did I, I think this is where I first do the drop. Let's see. Uh, there we go. Okay. So I'm going to clear out my, my red dots here. And, whoops, zoom in on this section. Whoop, zoom in on this section. And here's a nice feature. Uh, you can, if you drag in the timeline here, I'm creating a, a zone, a region. Oh, come on, move. Uh, all right, it's snapping to the snapping to the measure. Okay, come on, you can do it. There we go. Uh, so I just got this small region of sound, and uh, I can choose to loop it with this toggle repeat. And so now it's just going to play this one section over and over again. So I want to listen to that. Ideally, I should have headphones on or, or some decent speakers, but uh, I'm just doing a rough pass here. It's useful as a mechanical sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, copy. Can I do that? Copy selected area of items. Okay. I think I have that area selected. And now I'm going to insert new track, and now I'm going to hopefully paste. And so what I got is just this little bit. Now, it doesn't destroy the file. That's a really ni nice thing about Reaper. It's what's called non-destructive. Uh, so in, in actuality, the whole file is still here. 
uh, and when I export it, only when I export it as a new file, will will uh, it trim it. But your original source material remains the same. So now I have this section that I've grabbed uh, as a new track, and I'm going to call this. Uh, oh well, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure yet how I'm going to use it, but I just want to just go through the soup to nuts example. Uh, yeah, it could be a machine sound. Uh, I'm just going to go with it as is. Okay, so drag it all the way over here. Bank. Uh, whoops. Where'd it go? <laughs> Lost in, in software. Oh, there it is. It's because it's just a little tiny little piece here. I'm going to bring it all the way over to the left. Uh, mute the other two recordings. Yes, they're, uh, they're muted. I should give it a name. Uh, well, for right now, I'm just going to call it Sound 1. Sound 1. Okay, so you double click in there and you can rename it. Uh, whoops, come on, where's my little sizey thing? Uh, I hate software. Oh, it's not letting me size it any any bigger. That's what's nice to have a double, a dual screen. Okay, so it's center panned. I've got no effects on it. Uh, and it's just this little file here. Let's zoom in on it. It's just this little section. So right now, okay, I just want to focus on this non-destructive so I can remove these two just I'm going to remove them because I just want to focus on this bit here I can always add them back uh, so I'm going to and this is very short very short file but I'm going to put it again into loop mode and I'm going to use this to uh, establish my repeat zone and you notice this little red line here that's giving it a fade in and it fade out at the end uh, and that's that's just the default behavior when you do a clip uh, now automatically what Reaper will do is uh, put in this fade in fade out which you can actually sort of go like this and this solves the problem because with a fade in and a fade out it is essentially bringing the amplitude down to the point where it crosses zero. So your edits don't have to be quite as precise. Uh, so let's listen to that. And you see it is actually still pretty hot, plus 0.2. We don't really want red in there. So I'm going to bring this volume down. Play and repeat. And you see here, it's about at negative six decibels, minus six. I know it's kind of weird that you think of it as minus six, but that's just, you know, the measurement scheme. But this is kind of a good mechanical sound. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to export this. Uh, I, here it's called sound one. I'm gonna, well, I'm going to change it. It's going to be... Uh, I'm going to call it, and I like to use caps lock because, man, my eyes, <laughs> i got to be able to see these. Mecha sound. Okay, I'm going to call it mecha sound. Uh, I've got my region selected here, my time selected. I've got some fade-ins and fade-outs. Uh, um, and so then I can export it. So I'm going to go file render. So what rendering does, file render, it actually will take this wave section and make a new file out of it and apply any effects that I've put on the sample. So you go render and yeah, you got to find a f the usual stuff, file name render2. Uh, I'm going to browse the directory. I'm actually, I just want to go straight to my, my, my USB drive because then I'm going to bring it downstairs and what have, what have you. Sample rate. Let's talk a little bit about this. 44 100 hertz stereo uh, 24 bit PCM. Uh, now we're getting into this realm of quality. Uh, so what is CD quality? You guys probably don't even know what a CD is anymore, uh, but it's a, a CD quality is uh, 44,100 Hertz, 44,100 Hertz stereo. And it's actually a 16 bit file. 
So in theory and in practice, and there's been a lot of experiments around this, this is, this is all you really need because the human ear cannot hear beyond this resolution. Uh, it just can't. And there's been many tests, blind tests, with the same music at different bit rates and from a from a vinyl and from a this and 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 with people who are who allegedly have golden ears, meaning that they they hear really really well, and have pure tonality, pure pitch, uh, and some you know sometimes it, so then they're asked what what's the better file, <laughs> you know what's the, what's the better sound. And quite often they, they get it wrong according to how big and how, what the sample rate is and all this kind of stuff. So again, it comes back to the fact that in, in audio, there's a lot of misinformation. <laughs> there's a lot of myth, uh, which makes it kind of fun. Uh, and it brings us back to the point where if it sounds good, it is good. That would be a quote from Duke Ellington, by the way. Okay, so I export it, I give it a name. I'm going to put it right onto my drive here, and I'm going to call it Mecha One, Mecha One, Mecha One dot wave, and it's going to be. In this case, I want it to be mono, right? I don't want a stereo. I want a mono, 44, 100 hertz, 16-bit PCM wave file. In this case, and uh, master mix. That would be whatever is my master output, and I'm going to select time selection because that would be this bit here where I highlighted. I don't want anything else. Uh, and render one file. Monk. That didn't take any time at all. Uh, and there's the file. Uh, okay. And so now I have this little file. But let's look at, at what kind of processing we can do uh, on this file. Really quickly, I can add a digital effect, I can add some reverb. So I'm going to do that. Click on the FX button here, add FX to track one mecha sound. And these, this is all comes with it. All comes with it. Uh, free, free plugins in Reaper. You don't have to buy a thing. And I'm going to look for the reverb. Is this the one I want? Oh, no, I want, no, I want the other one. There's two reverbs. Uh, add reverberate. This is the one I'm more more familiar with. And so in this little editor here, uh, for for a, an effect, we have room size, dampening, stereo width, initial delay, low pass filter. So at what uh, at what frequency do at what low frequency do we allow the, the sound to pass? High pass filter means that above this range will will be listening. So at what frequency range is our reverb actually uh, uh, functioning on? Functioning in, functioning within. And we have presets, of course. Uh, so a lot of these are geared towards music. So snare trap, club snare, acoustic in the mix, intimate vocal, uh, dark corridor. That's a that's a good one. That's like you know, kind of heavy, heavy. So let's listen to uh, let's listen to it with this effect now. With, without. And then we can make a mix of wet and dry. Wet meaning the effect, and dry meaning the raw signal. percussive sound and then we have the reverb sound and of course we can change the size of our room we can 
change what frequency on the low end we're going to allow in. And that also high pass. So right now we're, we're just passing the very highest frequencies. And then we bring it down. Well, somewhere around there, maybe. And I will stop. So even though I stopped the file, you hear how that, that reverb carries on, carries on, carries on. It continues. Uh, so, okay, now I'm going to export this uh, file. Render. I'm going to render it. And I'm going to call it Mecha 2. Or let's call it Mecha Rev. So reverb. Mecha with reverb. Mecha Rev wave. Render one file. Simple as that. So this now has my effect applied to it. All right. Uh, so I'll stop the video. So that is, you know, step two. First you gather the sound, then you edit it. Uh, pause the video. I'll stop the video. I think shorter videos are better than big, longer ones. I think you would agree.